Tuesday, April 6th, and you're watching The Great Loss Rewatch. Today we're talking about The Package. sideways world, Sun and Jin are not married, and we all had our suspicions when in the season premiere, this security guard at the airport called her Miss Peck. And as soon as Sun said, I have something I have to tell you, I think we all went to the place, well, she's pregnant. But before Sun can tell that to Jin, there's a knock on the door, and it's Omar with Kimi, and then eventually Mikhail. It's like... Lost Bad Guy's Greatest Hits. A new YouTube makes it impossible for me to download any videos. That means I have to sing this dumb song. It's a lose-lose situation. We learned that the money that was taken from Jin at customs in the airport was not to give to Kimi, but was payment to Kimi for getting rid of Jin because there's one rule, you do not mess with the boss's daughter. Saeed helps Jin escape and he then shoots everybody including including eye patchy in the eye. Sun also gets shot and then she drops the bombshell, which wasn't really a bombshell, that she was pregnant, reinforcing the idea that Sun and Jin, no matter what storyline they're in, can never be happy and together at the same time. Even Kimi says it. Kimi says to Jin, some people just aren't meant to be together. And that has me concerned for like the ultimate destiny of Sun and Jin. I don't think it's gonna be a happy one. On the island, Sun really wants to go and look for Jin, but Alana and the others are really adamant about waiting for Richard at the camp. Sun goes back to her garden, which we hadn't seen in forever, and everything was pretty much dead, except for one stubborn tomato. While working in this garden, the Loch Ness Monster shows up and says, I know where Jin is, come with me and you can see him again. But rather than doing that, she runs away. And she runs into a tree and when Ben finds her and she wakes up, she can no longer speak English. She can understand it, but she just can't speak it. There's three reasons why this might have happened. One, Jack gives a very scientific and medical and one would argue plausible reason that this would happen. I think if you believe that, you are a fool. Two, when she was knocked out, the Loch Ness Monster did something to her communication skills. Or the third option, and the one that I'm really responding to, is that that son, while unconscious, had some kind of connection to her sideways self who cannot speak English. Richard then comes back to camp and says he knows what they need to do. The Loch Ness Monster is gonna use a GR-316 to get off the island, so they need to destroy the plane. Sun is not a fan of this idea and completely goes off on him in Korean. It was awesome. Jack then goes to talk to Sun, and Jack reaches out his hand to Sun, and Sun takes it. The Loch Ness Monster also did this to Sun, but then she ran away, and I think it's really important that Sun puts her trust in Jack. I think this really sets up Jack to be the new Jacob. Meanwhile, at the Loch Ness Monster's headquarters, Saeed expresses that he can't feel anything. And I feel a lot of things because Saeed can't feel. Most of them are sad. Jin, like Sun, is also tired of waiting and he wants to go look for her, but the Loch Ness Monster insists that he has to stay. And later, when the Loch Ness Monster is talking to Claire, he talks about how he needs all of them to get off the island. Now, do we believe him? Does he really need all of the candidates to get off of the island? Or does he want them all in one place? Because as we know, because of his conversation with Jacob and Abitirno, he'll just kill anybody who gets in his way. But he can't directly kill them. That's against the rules, I'm guessing. So he's got to set up a scenario where they will all die. While the Loch Ness Monster is gone, there is an attack on our camp, attack of the nerds. They take Jin put him in room 23. Widmore shows him pictures and son's camera of their daughter Ji Young. How weird must it be to look at this child and to know that they are yours even though you've never seen them. I It was very emotional. I, I teared up, that's for sure. The Loch Ness Monster doesn't like secrets, so he sends Saeed over to see what the package is on the sub, and it turns out that the package is Desmond, like a lot of us thought. Desmond is all groggy and drugged out, but he sees Saeed. I mean, they clearly make eye contact. So why is it that Widmore brought Desmond to the island? We know that an interest of his there is in the electromagnetic pockets of energy, which Desmond has been exposed to a lot. We also know because of that exposure to electromagnetic energy that the rules don't apply to Desmond, and there seems to be a lot of rules on this island. Tonight's episode is entitled Happily Ever After, which, I'm sorry, who do they think they're fooling? Maybe if this were the last episode ever of Lofts, maybe then I would believe them slightly, but come on, we've still got several episodes to go. There's no way this is a happily ever after. We're gonna need to watch that again. I just wonder what the purpose
purpose was for bringing Jin to room 23 where they would do brainwashing. Really? Really?